The fight game is made up of many great warriors. Fighters, champions that step into the ring and test themselves against all the odds. Today, we are going to meet one of the greatest. A man that has dedicated his whole life to the fight game. Travelled the globe, represented himself and Australia proudly. A man that was voted by International Kickboxer magazine readers as being the best of all time. The man I speak of is John Wayne Parr. His achievements are almost unbelievable. That is until you see him in centre ring, where he calls his office doing what he does best, taking care of business. Let's go and meet John Wayne Parr and have a chat with him. So what do you call? Hello, mate. Hey, welcome to my gym. Thank you for having us. Thank hey, you for awesome, having us. Awesome. Awesome. Ah, well. Well, JW, less than 48 hours after the biggest win on the biggest show of the year, revenge or repeat, you've taken care of business with Preacher, and of course it's back to day-to-day -day life here. Back to the gym, most people would have thought you'd be, you know, maybe going on a long holiday, taking a long break, but no, you're back preparing Angie for her fight and back at the gym teaching like every other day. Um, yeah, pretty much. Don't have much time for, um, to relax because Angie's fighting um, on this Friday. So I thought Saturday, one day to sort of relax a little bit around the pool and then, yeah, I've got to get straight into training mode and be the trainer again because, uh, yeah, it's a big fight for Angie. She's got the, it's going to prove who's the best female in Australia, so I needed a win so we can be the, the best pound for pound couple. <laughs> most people would, of course, think that, you know, after a big fight like that, that would be all easy stuff. You'd be off on a holiday and uh, taking it easy, but not so. Uh, when you've got your own business, you can't afford really to, to take that much time off. Um, when, as soon as I finish, I'm back into teaching classes because when I'm getting ready for the fights, yeah. and, and the last week, Angie will do all the classes and it's not fair on her that, that she gets all the work. So as soon as I get back, I take over and then she can have a little break from straight, so, back, into straight it, back into sure. it. Well, take us back to the beginning. Obviously, uh, you started the martial arts when you were a very young lad. Tell us a little bit about your martial arts beginnings. Uh, when I was just a tiny tacker, I used to watch the ABC and Magic Monkey and everything else. And, <laughs> and um, then the karate came along and I was an only kid, so I used to practice in the backyard. Had no idea what I was doing, but just, just loved the martial arts. So I was, uh, just, just loved it. And then when we moved to Brisbane, uh, a taekwondo school was just up the road. And when I was 11, we went with mum and um, I just fell in love with it. For the, as soon as I seen everyone in their gis and, and in the traditional karate stances and everything else, I thought this was, this was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. And as a little fella, I wanted to go to Korea and I wanted to be a Taekwondo World Champion. I wanted to be the, the best. And then um, I, I, I went into the, after a little while of grading for my yellow belt, I went into the competition. I had three fights in one day. Won a silver medal for, uh, for Queensland at the QE2 many years ago. And then uh, that was it, I was sold. That, that was going to be my future. And then unfortunately, they ended up moving out because they couldn't make the rent. And a few months later, um, Muay Thai, or kickboxing, moved in yep. with um, sure. Steve Super Kick Vic. He was my very first kickboxing trainer. And then after that, then I really was sold. I was like, oh, I'm, this is it. I'm, I'm going to be a kickboxer. So. <laughs> of course, in the earlier days, and you're probably going to not like me for bringing this up, but they used to call you the wonder kicker. Yes, yes, yeah. I brought that upon myself, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Steve Super Kick Vic was my hero. Yep. And I thought he was the man. So I wanted something along the same sort of lines, Super Kick Vic. Uh, wonder kick, yeah, that's, that sounds good. Where, why not? So yeah, I had, the, I had that for a few, few years. Through the Taekwondo yeah, years. Yeah, it was all right. Well, ta Taekwondo's uh, loss was Muay Thai's gain, I suppose, in the long run. But how did you get the John Wayne Parr handle? Uh, when I went to Thailand, uh, the, my name in Thai is, um, actually means it like bastard. So we said, oh, we, we can't call you Wayne. How could your parents even contemplate calling you Wayne? Uh, so they said, oh, they, I told them a little bit of my family history about how dad was a horse trainer. Yeah. Said, well, we'll call you. We'll call you John Wayne. John Wayne was the most famous foreigner known to man. So, so why don't why don't, why don't you? Uh, easy legend. for people to remember. And but in Thailand they, they don't say Wayne, so they say John Will. So I was regarded throughout Thailand as John Will. Okay. Well, you're you're a young man, and it was time for you to sort of step in on the local on the local scene, make a bit of a name for yourself, take on some of the the big hitters that are floating around in the sport today. The likes of Nugget, who of course uh, is renowned as a trainer these days but you did some battles with, uh, with Nugget. And uh, Mark Pease, who at the time was, was a real veteran of the Gold Coast fight game, and uh, someone who uh, would have been an awesomely big challenge with a huge crowd against Mark Pease. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was back in the early days, I just, wanted, I just wanted to fight, so I didn't really know who anyone was. I, I knew Nugget was um, pretty famous at the time. So after four or five fights, I was only 16 at our first encounter. Uh, yeah, I've come into the ring and 
and I sort of got three people clapping <laughs> and then he's walked out and the whole, there's about 4,000 people at Festival Hall and the roof's come off and I thought, oh, who am I? who's this bloke? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, no, we had a, we had a five round war, it was, it was a fantastic fight. Uh, he, he got the better of me on the day, but I was, I was still very green, but I learned a lot from the fight. Um, yeah, and then I fought Peasy the very next fight. And I, I was, even though I had a hard one with Nugget, it sort of encouraged me to go even better next time. I didn't want to lose again, I didn't like that feeling of losing. So yeah, me and Mark had, we had, we, I got in from the very opening bell and kept up the pace and, and until the Daniels was done. So. We're talking to you also about your battle with Wayne in the uh, in the early 90s and yeah. what was known now I suppose as a bit of a changing of the guard. You've gone on to become one of the premier trainers on the Gold Coast and of course Wayne, well he's doing what he's doing at the moment. Yep. Did you ever think it would have panned out that way? Well not when I first thought him obviously but uh, as I said it was at the end of my career and I was a little bit underprepared. I sort of came into the ring walking around the ring talking to people as I was moving along. Wayne hopped in the ring, he looked like a pit bull possessed you could say, he was ready, eager and waiting, and whereas I wasn't, and as the bell went for the very first round, he jumped on me like I was no tomorrow, so I mean we both went toe toe for a little while, and then Wayne was just a little bit too powerful, too hungry and too strong at the moment. Coming to the second round was pretty much the same sort of thing, I just couldn't start, and things I said, I was probably a little bit older, I think I was a little bit wiser, trying to lead into a tie fight. He had no chance for that, he was ready to get me all the way through. So as I said, he had a lot of crowd following as well as I did, but changing the gun definitely was on that night for Wayne Parr, for sure. These days, obviously, a lot of, a lot of Westerners, a lot of Aussies travel over to Thailand, tours and so forth, and, and people are really, it's, it's almost, I suppose, trendy to, to train in Thailand now, travel to the camps, go to the stadiums. But of course, you were going over there, uh, you know, when it wasn't so well known. There was uh, yourself, and uh, you know a couple of other Aussies that had travelled to Thailand to train and fight. Tell us a bit about those those early days. Uh, Damien Meyer was um, probably one of the first pioneers. I, I used to read about him in the magazine how he went to Thailand, and then a couple other um, people had come over to Australia. Uh, Stefan Nakima, but before he fought Paul Briggs, yep. he mentioned that he was living in Thailand yep. at the time. So it, it was my dream. So oh, this is where this is where it's at. Thailand's a place. You know, after watching all the movies as well and seeing the Thais fight on video. I wanted to go and experience for myself, so me and Richard would talk about it non-stop in the, in the restaurant. And then um, the opportunity came, he said, would you like to go over? And I, I jumped at the opportunity, and then yeah, I went over and um, yeah, I never looked back. We've spoken in the past about some of the, the, uh, the wars you had over there. The training was, was arduous and, and the conditions were, were tough. Yep. But the fights in Thailand back then, what were they like? Oh, it was insane. Uh, when, I, when I went to Sengtens, I was the first foreigner that, that ever accepted. So the, the living conditions were quite crazy. We, I slept, sh shared a, like a dorm with uh, six other boxes, only on the floor. I'd have to put down a doona as my bed on the, on the wooden floor, and then a sheet as, my, as that. And then we'd all share the, the share. And it wasn't a conventional share, it was just a basin with a tub, and you'd, you'd rinse on, lather up, and then rinse off. There was, there was no um, toilet facility, it was just a, a, like a uh, porcelain thing on the floor. You have, to, you have to kneel over, and no toilet paper, you have to use water on your hand. So that was a little bit crazy at the start, but, <laughs> but then after a few months, it just becomes everyday life. Yeah, um, the, the fights, Ty is uh, the greatest fight you've ever seen in Australia. You go over there and you can watch two little six-year-olds do twice as good. It's just mind-blowing. It's just a way of life. It's, it's not considered a sport, it's considered a job. And um, there's so much pressure for every single fighter to be the best that they can. Well, you fought over in Thailand and, and really started to consolidate over in Thailand, but it was time to come back to Melbourne and take on a fighter from England, who was based in Melbourne, training with Dana Goodson, so you knew he was going to be well prepared. And it was really a fight that launched Thai boxing in Australia, a full elbow war that uh, had many people really standing up and taking, taking notice of Thai boxing. Uh, I'd been living in Thailand for two years at that stage. I'd, I'd fought many of the Thai, Thai greats. I'd, I'd started making a name for myself in Japan. Um, there was an opportunity to come back to Australia and, and fight on Fox Sports, which was very exciting for myself. I'd, I'd proved myself in Thailand and Japan and I wanted to prove to uh, the Australian fans that, that I was up and coming and, and I wanted to be a world champion and this was my a chance to make my mark. Um, I flew back to Australia a few days before the fight to con condition up. Um, and I got in there and the, the fight didn't go to as planned. I did all my homework, I thought I was, I was in right, but he was just that little bit taller, a little bit longer reach. And 
I think I was winning the fight, but I just kept running on the silly elbows, and then I kept the pressure on. I didn't want to stop, no matter how much damage was done to me. I, I didn't care because I wanted to win more than anything in the world. Um, I think end of round three, uh, uh, they tried to call the fight off, and I, I pleaded with Terry. I said, "Mate, please, I've come all this way. This is." I think, I think, the, I think the legendary words that you know a lot of people remember from back then was, "I get worse than this in Thailand all the time." You know, yeah. people people ringside, were, you know, in awe of, I suppose, of the damage that you, had, you had managed to, to get. And you still wanted to fight on. Um, had I looked in the mirror, I would have thought <laughs> otherwise. But uh, but no, because nah, uh, when you're fighting, the adrenaline kicks in, so you don't really feel the pain. So I just I just blocked it out. Um, the fourth round I was doing okay. Fifth round, uh, I got hit right in the middle of my forehead with an uppercut elbow, and it split me to the bone. And once I seen the blood start to spurt in front of me, then I realized. And referee Bryce Bird whistle is called and into the fight. A sensational display of elbows from Chris Allen. That's it. And in That's the it. end, poor old Wayne Path and Paul knocks on the front door and this one's all over, Mark. Well, that, that uh, uppercut elbow just broke Wayne Path's nose. Straight into it. Chris Allen, what an expert in technique. Technically brilliant elbow strikes. Razor sharp, speed, timing. He had it all here tonight with his elbows, Chris Allen. Yeah, the, the thing was, everyone remembers it. It's my worst, oh, not my worst fight, but my most painful fight. I ended up getting um, 54 stitches. Uh, I ended up with five cuts with 54, and it was right on the eve of my 22nd birthday. So. More stitches than a you know, patchwork quilt. <laughs> but anyway, it, uh, it, as I said, it, it, it stood the test of time, and it was a great bout. We move again a little bit forward now. Daniel Dawson, 2000, epic battle. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good fight. I really didn't do myself any justice, so I, I didn't train adequately enough. Um, I'd, I'd been a Thailand for four years. This was my first first time that I'd been by myself, training myself, and, and I, I was going to nightclubs, and uh, I was drinking a lot, and I, I shouldn't have been. I wasn't focused. Uh, I ran around the block a couple of days before the, thing, before the fight, thinking, nah, I'm, I'm fine. But, um, but I got in there, I, I wasn't going to let him beat me. We had a three-round war. I think it went to an extension round, and then um, yeah, he just I was I was winning I was winning the first round. I was hit with that head kick, and he busted my eardrum, um, and it could have gone either way. And then the extension was backwards and forwards again, and then, yeah, just the, the judges thought it went his went his way. But I went, went back to the change room, thinking it was all done, and then the doctor runs in and says, "Oh, Daniel's busted his eye, uh, his, his eye socket. Yeah, you want to fight the next fight against Chopper? Against yeah, Chopper, that's right. No worries." That was Judgment Day, if I'm not mistaken. Judgment Day, of course, yes. Standard Moravian Town Hall there. And yep. again, a great tournament and probably well before its time. If you look at the, the fighters on that card, it's, it's world class today. Yep. But the, the, the rematch or the fight or the matchup with Daniel Dawson, now the Preachers, I suppose, um, been taken care of, so to speak. Everyone's now starting to tell a fight between you and Rocco. Rocco's back, come back from boxing. Yep. He's uh, starting to, to flex his muscle again in the Thai boxing and the kickboxing world. What's your thoughts on uh, a rematch with Rocco? Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's awesome that he's back in the business. Um, he's been missing in action. He went to boxing for a little bit, but I think Muay Thai is in his heart, just like it is in mine. Uh, he, he's an awesome fighter, great champion. I think if we were to fight, it'd be the, the battle of all battles. It'd, be, it, it'd stop the nation. Um, yeah, I hope it does happen. I hope uh, a serious promoter can put it on and we can make some serious money, both of us. Yeah. Who, do you, who do you rate as your biggest challenger within the Oceania region? Who do you rate as your biggest challenger? Or the person you'd say, yeah, if I, if I squared up against him, I'd have to really knuckle down and train hard and focus. There's probably, probably two. There's um, Daniel from Australia and um, Shane Chopper Chapman from New Zealand. Uh, every time I get in the ring with these boys, they're always prepared 100% and they've got that never say die attitude no matter how much you damage them. They're uh, always in, ready to give it straight back. So I'd, I'd always make sure I'm 100% well, before I get in you, the ring. You mentioned Chopper and you, you did obviously after Rocco, Chopper was your next fight up. Yep. How did, how did you feel squaring up against Chopper? It was really sort of hitting his straps at that time too. Yeah, I, I thought I, I won that fight again. Um, I, I dropped him round two and then I dropped him again round three. And then just before the bell, I ran into a punch and I got dropped myself. But in the three-round fight, it's pretty easy to do the scores. Uh, two eight counts to one eight count. It's yeah. it's not that hard. And somehow, or rather, the judges decided to give it a chopper, which still to this day has me scratching my head. But um, yeah, we, we've had two more fights since then. I've I've been lucky enough to um, stop him both times. So yeah, I think I think I've. Got, re got revenge, so to say, so to speak. <laughs> so that chapter can close, maybe, for the time being, anyway. 
Okay, the other fight, of course, this was a fight that uh, it was a historical fight for the fact that it was matched on the internet, actually, on the, on the sportsblitz.net site. Uh, and it was, of course, you against the people's champion, Scott the Cannon Bannon. Now, Scotty at the time was a very, very popular fighter, hence the name the people's champ. Run us through that one, because that was, that was a hugely hyped fight for Queensland. Um, I started kickboxing when I was 13 years old, and by this stage I was 24. I'd been to Thailand for four years, I'd fought on King's Birthdays, fought Lumpini, fought in Japan, come back, started to make my name in, in Australia, and the only thing I was lacking was a world title to, to add to my credentials. I was, I was, there's so many world titles in Australia that it, if you don't even have to go overseas, you just have to fight someone from a different state and you're a world champion. And I'd done all this stuff overseas, yet I wasn't getting the credibility I, I don't think I deserved, I, I thought I deserved. And I needed that world title around my waist to, to prove to everyone that, that I was not just the your local pub fighter. Um, Scotty had the world title at the time, so he was my whole focus. Someone got him in it and said, oh, Scotty will wipe the floor. Uh, I'd, I'd give Scotty a good run. And everyone jumped on saying, how dare you disrespect Scott like that. Yeah, yeah. And I said, hey, hey, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a bum, I'll fight Scott whenever. So I actually rang Scott um, after it started heating up and I said, Scott, mate, everyone's talking about this fight, isn't it? We've got to do it. But um, he, wasn't, he wasn't too keen. And then after, say, uh, eight, eight, nine months, he finally came around, he got a good offer from Tarek. And uh, the funny thing was, uh, I was looking on the internet and Scott said, oh, I've just talked to Tarek. Oh, this is me reading it for the first time. But I've just talked to Tarek, so I can have made it a winner take all. I'm sitting there in my lounge room shaking my head going, really, is that a fact? <laughs> oh, well, if you want to make it a winner take all, let's make it an extra 2,000 of our own money on top. So yeah, it ended up being a good payday for myself. <laughs> Scotty Bannon is a clever fighter, folks. Don't put anything past him. Just when you think you've got all the answers, Scotty Bannon changes the questions. He might do that right here in centre ring against John Wayne Parr. He's got the power over Parr. Has he got the technique over Parr? Parr just hammers a right hand, followed by a left rail kick. Scotty Bannon's ribs are red and folks. Now here come the knees, probably from Wayne Parr. Turns Bannon around against the right. Bannon goes down. He's hurt. He's hurt. Scotty's been hurt. He's got caught in the knee. Trouble. Once again, Pa just getting in. There's the first one. He's going to spin Scotty around here. Pa, you see him just work him on the ropes. Bang! There it goes straight into the midsection, and that was the one that just took the wind right out of Bannon. Your winner and new ISKA middleweight champion of the world, John Wayne Pa. Wow, what a night it's been for the Boom Two Gym. And coming up after the break, more great moments with Australia's greatest warrior, John Wayne Parr. Taken on a few of the hard hitters, the people's champion, a world title now around the waist, and you've moved into boxing, professional boxing. Tell us why. Uh, by that stage, I'd, I'd sort of, I thought I'd done pretty much everything I wanted to do. 
Uh, I was living with Paul Briggs at the time, and I seen what Paul was doing with Broad Waterhouse, and um, uh, I seen him kicking goals, and the grass was green on that side. He was getting uh, promises uh, if he had a few wins, he's going to make all this money, and I didn't want to get left behind because there was nothing at kickboxing at this stage. We were lucky to make a thousand dollars. So I jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, I did retired in at the end of 2000, and all of 2001, I dedicated the whole year towards boxing. Um, I did alright. I won an, an Australian middleweight title. I had a, had a few wins here and there. Um, uh, my I had 13. Ended up having 13 professional fights, 10 wins, 10 knockouts. Um, but my 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 pure love was still with Muay Thai. In the end of 2001, the opportunity came to fight on the King's birthday in Thailand. I, I, I jumped on a plane when I had had two fights in one night, won both fights, and then I, I come back to Australia and it really got me thinking. It's like, you know what? I, I don't really enjoy the boxing. It's boring. Let's let's uh, before we move move through the boxing too quick. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry getting too excited. Uh, the Australian title fight. Yep. With uh, with Andre Andre Kamula. Yep. A very a very awkward southpaw. Yes, southpaw. How did uh, how did you how did you prep for for Andre? Uh, we. We had, a, we had a game plan, we just trained hard. Um, we did a lot of sparring in Southpaws. I'd fought a lot of Southpaws in Thailand as well. Uh, he, was, he came into the, to the fight having over 150 amateur fights. I think he was an Olympian as well. Um, and my whole game plan was to just run at him and just not give him room to move and just pressure, pressure for the whole time. He ended up giving up on his stool after the 10th round, I think, from a broken hand. And um, yeah, I just terrorized him for 10 rounds. <laughs> I suppose the other two notable boxing boxing bouts, um, of course, uh, the fight with Nader Hamden, and at the time, Nader Hamden, Jeff Fennick in the corner, that's got to be a little bit daunting, that's got to be a little bit sort of intimidating, and, and it, I suppose, for me, the interesting point of that is actually how that fight came about, maybe you could tell us a bit about that one. We well, were scheduled to fight um, Abdul Rashid from Pakistan, and I've got off the plane to go towards Sydney, and at the airport we got picked up and they said, oh mate, uh, Nader Hamden's opponent's pulled out. Would you just be interested in fighting for the IBF Pan Pacific title? If you beat Nader, you'll go straight to number five in the IBF rank rankings. And then we talked about prize money and they, they come, come up trumps with the, with the prize money. They gave me the best offer that I'd ever had. I said, sure, why not? I, I trained hard, I knew I had the fitness. Um, more pocket money as well. More pocket money, more pocket money. Um, we had a great fight, it went the 12 rounds. After six rounds, I started changing from orthodox to southpaw and really confusing him. Yeah. Um, and then after 12 rounds, I didn't, it could have gone either way. But the, what, what won the fight for me was our after fight speeches. Nader tried to give an after fight speech and, and the crowd just booed him. He, he, he couldn't even get his words out there, the crowd booing that loud. And then as soon as I've got the microphone to give me my spiel, the crowd cheer so loud, they wouldn't even let me get my speech out. They've just um, made me feel so welcome and, and so warm. And they, 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 even though I lost the fight, I won the crowd. And that, that to me is yeah. what Sometimes. it's all about. Fox Sports. Now we have just 30 seconds remaining. Will the fight be decided in these last 30 seconds? Yeah, this round's still up for grabs. Very, very close round. Whoever finishes the strong wide level will win this last round. Well, certainly a draw wouldn't surprise. Neither of them really deserves to lose their undefeated record. Big shots landed by John Wayne Parr, but Nader Handen also had some heavy artillery going as well. Right to the end, these men are both working very hard. Nader Handen and John Wayne Parr have put on a show. Yeah, John Wayne Parr stuck on the ropes. He wants to try and spin his way off, but there's the end of the fight. What a great fight, huh? Oh, great fight. Standing ovation here in the crowd. Nader Handen and John Wayne Parr to raucous applause from the crowd here have put on a tremendous display. What a, what a clean fight it was. Both these guys, there's no, there no foul tactics. They both fought, fought with honour. And for the official tabulation, let's hear it from Andy Raymond. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous points decision. Judge Bernie McMahon scored the bout 117-111. Judge John Wright scored the bout 117-111. And Judge Derek Millam Jr. scored the bout 117-114. For your winner, and still IBF Junior Middleweight Champion, Mr. Excitement, Nader Hamden. 
Well, mixed reaction from the fans. I don't know what that is all about. Although Johnny Wright and Bernie McMahon scoring about six points to the advantage of Nader Handen. I thought it was a little closer than that. Derek Millam Jr. saw 117, 114 for Nader Handen. I come here to, um, I come here to fight. I come here to win. Um, pleasure giving Wayne Parr a shot at my title. He's been working hard. He's been going through the Australian ranks. He, just, he deserves a shot, and um, he gave me a great fight. I needed one. Thank you, Wayne. Nader, you've got plenty. You took, the f sh you took the fight on very short notice. A former world Muay Thai champion receiving a huge applause. You've only had eight professional fights. You walk away here without the hardware, but on behalf of not only everyone here, but watching live around Australia on Fox, you get that chin up and hold the head up high, mate. That was inspirational. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thank, thank you, everyone in the crowd. I don't understand why he was all booing Nader. He, he beat me fair and square. He's worthy of being a champ. I had to go. Unfortunately, I didn't go on with the chocolates. I tried my best. Um, I'll go back in the gym. I'll try harder. Maybe a couple more fights. If Nader's up to it, maybe have a rematch. Um, I know I can get better. I've only had nine fights now. Um, um, yeah, I just, hope, I just hope I can get all your support in the future, and I hope that one day I can do you all proud. You have done us proud tonight, John Wayne Parr, in an absolute... We've seen it before, sometimes the judge's decision really doesn't tell the story and, uh, you know, the crowd uh, can, I suppose, appease some of those decisions uh, at times. Yep. Some of those decisions, you've had a few of them, actually, through the career. But the next boxing battle was, of course, it did come off then against uh, Abdul Rashid. Yep. And that was for the number five world ranking and, and all the rest of it. Now, how did you find that one out? Ah, uh, yeah, that, this one was really another hard fight. He was a um, tough Pakistani with a, a huge right hand. Uh, the, I think the second round uh, will come out. The first round was a feel. The second round, I think I've gone to throw, throw a right hand, and he's come over the top with a, a left hook, um, making me kiss the canvas. Um, I jumped up with, a, with wobbly legs, and, I, and I've just beaten the count. And then, but I was fit as a fiddle. Back when I was training on the road, we worked really hard. So um, I just. From there on in, I just put the pressure straight back on him, had him on the back foot the whole time. That big right hand at Rashid's throwing his dangerous punch as John Wayne Pass smothers him. There it is again, it's a dangerous punch, hits Parr right on the temple, that hurts more than on the chin. Gets under that punch, Wayne Parr, left and right by Parr, terrific effort, John Wayne Parr. Oh, courage personified, Look, you Wayne Parr. Back his head, all right? Referee Phil Austin warns Abdul for pushing Wayne Parr down. Wow. What a tremendous round of boxing. Um, ended up being one of the best rounds of the year. And then I just kept putting the pressure on. And then at the end of the fifth, he ended up giving up on his stool as well. He also had broken his hand and um, too much pressure for him. So, so I'm very happy with that victory as well. He's had good success with that left cross from Rashid as, as he walks into the left and right from Parr. Gee, he's got good hands, Wayne Parr. And has the ability to get a punch off when you least expect it as well. Yeah, fast hands. Good defence by Rashid. 40 seconds left here, round number five. Oh, yeah. Good combination yeah. coming from Wayne Park. Oh, that was a hurtful punch. And backing up Rashid again with a left hand. Rashid in trouble here, round number five. Wayne Parr on the canvas in round number two, fighting back with good authority here in this round. Won the last two rounds, Wayne Parr. Doesn't need to get too cute, just got to do what he's been doing to win the last two rounds. He needs to keep doing that. There's that damaging left cross again from Rashid. Wayne just can't seem to be got out of it that way. Wayne now switches to Southpaw. That was all kickboxing goals, and a good round for Wayne Parr. The end of round five. My hand broken under. Well, Abdul Rashid says his hand's broken. They're going to wave this away. Abdul Rashid has broken his hand, and John Wayne Parr is going to get the result here. It would appear that shame. Abdul Rashid has it's broken right, his man. hand and has waved away, and John it's Wayne right. Parr down in round number two. Gets his hand up, he has done it! What a comeback! 
suffered one of the most vicious right hands we've seen on Fox Sports for some time. He climbs off the canvas and gets the result. That is the advantage of never say die. What an absolute warrior is Wayne Parr. Tragedy for Abdul Rashid as Wayne Parr celebrates. The sign, the look on the face of Rashid says it all. Your winner and new OBA Junior Middleweight Champion, John Wayne Parr. And isn't he happy? You lost the title to McLeod. Yes. The Aussie title. Did that, did that sort of make you then go, ah, oh, this boxing game had enough of it, or what? Why did that? Why did that sort of eventuate? Why do you think you lost that? Fight? Um, the the fight, the first round was going to plan. The first round, I, I was nailing him hard. I was landing my shots. Um, I was I was the aggressor the whole time. And then into the end of the first, uh, apparently um, he went back to the corner with a broken hand again. Uh, for the next 11 rounds, all he could do was hug me and hold me. We'd hug me for 30 seconds, the ref would break, he'd move around, he'd throw two jabs and hold me for another 30 seconds. And after 11 rounds of that, I was so frustrated. And then they've given him the decision. I lost my Australian title and I thought, you know what, you can stick this boxing. Um, um, if, if that's enough to win you a fight after 11 rounds of holding, I said, you can stick it. So um, that's, that's when I, that's when that King's birthday opportunity came along in, in the end of 2001. And that's what sold me. I said, oh, no, I'm, as much as, as the boxing's all right, I'm really at, at heart a Muay Thai fighter. Yeah, and that's, that's where uh, you I belong. know, a little bit of bad luck with with losing the Australian strap in boxing, in pro boxing, of course. But then it was time for redemption, time to get back, of course, with the help of of Paul Briggs, your brother from another mother, as he says, and uh, step in on the undercard to him at Carrara. Tell us a bit about that fight against, of course, the man with the ironclad jaw, Mike Cope. Uh, Rod Waterhouse was doing the promotion with Paul. Um, Paul was fighting. Uh, a very tough Argentinian as the main event on on the main event, and uh, this is my opportunity to get on the card. Uh, this is I hadn't seen Paul. Oh, we were training together, but but the fight on the same card, we, we were like brothers. Yeah. So um, I wasn't going to miss out on the opportunity. Uh, Brod come up with Mike Cope, and I'm thinking, oh no, because he's one of the strongest kickboxers at the time as well. So we, we trained hard. I did a lot of rounds with Paul. Um, Paul was hitting me pretty hard, but at the same time, I, I was giving it back a little bit. So my confidence was up and I was prepared for a good fight. Uh, the first round, we just we moved around and we felt each other out and we we're, were putting the pressure on towards the end there. And just fortunate for me, I landed with a nice left hook and um, yeah, poor Mike went stiff and he, he hit his head pretty hard on the, on the canvas when he fell down and he couldn't make the count. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I was expecting the, the fight of my life, but luckily Lady Luck was on my side and I, and I landed the punch that did the job. And that, of course, was, was then, uh, you basically, you've said, well, you've made your statement in the boxing world, and uh, was fortune time for the, for the Thai boxing, and the kickboxing arena is yet again back in the kickboxing, and uh, at the time, against one of, I suppose, the most uh, technically gifted uh, kick fighters, Jenk Bahik, of course, from Melbourne, and yourself and Jenk, epic battle. Yeah, we, we had fun. Uh, I'd been in America for that stage for almost a year. Uh, my, my training, I was pretty much training myself over there, running, running the streets of San Diego in the mornings. Um, I came back a week, before, two weeks before the fight and, and did a little bit more prep with Paul Briggs with, and Rod Waterhouse to get my fitness back up to scratch. Uh, Jenk hadn't had many knee fights at that stage, so we used that to our advantage. Every time we got in close, we, um, we got into the grapple and, and, and yeah, he was, he was put up right off track every time we got in the grapple, so, so no, it was a good fight for me. The other, uh, the other fight of, I suppose, uh, big, big consequence was the fight with Alex Tui. You know, Alex, a living legend, of course. Yep. Australia's first ever world champion. Even beat uh, Stan Amanda getting the world title around the waist. And you would have obviously held Alex in high regard walking oh. into to that bout. Yeah, it was, um, it was a bit of a shock a, a few weeks out knowing that we'd be matched together. Uh, he was such an inspiration for myself. I actually had more, more respect for Alex Tui than I did for Stan because he was, he was the unsung hero. He, he never said boo. He never heard about him. Stan was always, Stan was always the man, no doubt about it. But Alex never got the recognition he deserves, I don't believe. And um, when we got matched, he was a little bit older at that stage and, and, and it, I'd been training really hard and I knew how strong I was hitting. And before we actually walked out of the ring, I actually went up, walked up to um, Alex and 
I said, oh, look, sorry, I'm so sorry what I'm, what I'm just about to do to you. <laughs> um, and he sort of looked at me and said, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I just got in there and that was for the Cayman Max Oceana. And there was no way knowing that anyone in that ring that night was going to beat me. And, and he was my first opponent and I had to make a statement for the other boys saying I'm here and I'm taking this out tonight. Yeah. And yeah, luckily the, the fight got stopped and I think in the third round. Third and final round of action. It's been all lane pass so far. Can Alex Tui bring it home? Or is it the end of the legend? Body shot from Tui off the lead hand, actually forcing Wayne Parr back, just a sign of the power in those punches of Tui, but yet to land that one flush on the jaw he's been looking for. Wayne Parr again, comes out smoking, opening up like a house on fire, and the towel's been thrown the towel. in. Oh, it is all over in centre ring. Alex Tui taking one knock too many, the towel thrown in, Hammer. Well, certainly a good call from the corner. Unfortunately, Alex Tui is uh, certainly a veteran of the sport, someone who's been around forever. And as you mentioned, Michael, Australia's first ever world champion, somewhat uh, nearly 10 years ago now. And uh, Alex Dewey has done his hard yards. No real need for him to get in centre ring anymore. Uh, looking for the big payday. But uh, John Wayne Parr certainly switched on. The other battle uh, we want to talk about, it's uh, redemption time with Chopper. So up against up against Chopper again? Yep. Uh, I'd, I'd lost to Chopper on the Judgment Day. Yep. And this is the second time that we met. And I wanted to prove to him that, that the first time I deserved to be the winner. And I, I, I kept the pressure on him once again. I pushed him hard. Uh, well, it was pretty much, pretty much tip for tat everything for the first two rounds. And then the right hand, I hit him with a nice right and then dropped him. And then, then I just took my time and stalked him. I'd already won one on the scorecards. I didn't have to do anything silly. So I just took my time. And then uh, I think he threw a, a jab off the ropes. I, I've pulled back just a fraction. And as he brought his hand back, I just come straight over the top and hit him with my right hand, sure. right on the chin. And then with the, with the K1 rules, it's only two knockdowns. And then the fight's over. So yeah, that was, that was a, a very, very nice punch and a very great, a great feeling. Third and final round of action. Both men touch leather and we are underway. Lane Park. You're right, Hammer, he really does want it. And how much does Chopper Chapman want to defend his title? Outside thigh kick from Parr, beautiful anticipation and timing. Straight right hand, left round kick from Parr. Body shot, round kick again from Parr. Oh, he's got him with a big right hand! Big right hand. the head! And Chopper went down! That's a count. Right hand Six. to the side of the head and Chopper Seven. went down! Eight, hands up, let's go. Chopper's going to need a knockdown now, Michael. He is going to need something extraordinary. And you know what? He knows it. He's going to have to take this one by the throat and give it a hell of a shake, just like I'm going to do to you right when we finish <laughs> our commentary. You were dead. <laughs> Wayne Parr, he is riding a crest of a very high wave at the moment. What an awesome right hand. Let's check it out again. Have a look at that first one. Body shot, Parr left, and he's lining up the right. There it goes. That was the first knockdown. Chopper Chapman gets a count after that one. A little bit weathered. He was in the fog, and there it goes again. The second one, two knockdown rule, and it was all Wayne Parr measures off. Right on the button, Wayne Park. Ladies and gentlemen, in accordance with the K1 two knockdown rule, your winner at a time of 42 seconds of round number three, and he is through to the final, John Wayne Park. Let's, let's talk a little bit about rules and scoring and decisions. It was a decision that uh, is talked about to this day, and the rematch that's wanted, of course, all over the world is. Iron Mike Zambides, you know, he's no doubt one of the more popular fighters of the division and a uh, little pocket dynamo, a bit of a legend. What, what were your thoughts about that Zambides fight? Uh, before the fight, I'd, I'd seen Zambo fight a few times on Fox and, and no doubt he is a great fighter. He's very exciting to watch. Even as myself, I'm, I might be a fighter, but I'm also a fan of the sport. I appreciate someone that can, knows what they're doing. Uh, He'd come to Australia and no one had been able to beat him. And I want to be the first. 
and I'd already had two hard fights, but at the same time, this was my chance to, to prove to Australia and, and to get a ticket into J the K1 Max in Japan. Uh, I, me and Paul watched these first two fights while I was at the back preparing, and he said, oh, you can beat this bloke. And we come up with a game plan in the back room, and, and I stuck to that for the for the three rounds. Michael Chappelle ringside with the hammer, and Tarek Solak, and here we go in the final of K1 Max Oceania. Early left hand there from Zambides. High left ground kick from Wayne Parr. The height and reach advantage to Wayne Parr. Another blockbuster matchup, a marquee main event. The final that so many predicted. And now, anyone's guess as to who will emerge the King of Kings? Well, can Wayne Parr do what uh, no one has been able to do here? Bar my cope. And it is fine an opening in the armour of Iron Mike. Clubbing left hand there from Zambides. Tarak, your thoughts so far? I'm waiting on my toes and I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> this is a fight that I want to see for a very long time. All tied up now. Neither man working the grapple. Wayne Parr trying to execute the dump. It is not permitted under K1 rules. Good refereeing there from Dave Hedgecock. Well, when it comes to grappling, you have to go a long way to find someone better than Wayne Parr, but Zambides is fought his worked his strategy well and now you see the waist clinch and that is how he's going to try and negate the knees of Wayne Parr. Knees to the midsection there from Wayne Parr catching Zambides on the ribs. Zambides wants to get out of there. Dave Hedgecock separates both men. You see the chamber on Wayne Parr's grapple oh, is very high style. Bleeding from a nose hammer so he's also been tagged with a knee in close. Ground kick to the rib cage there from Wayne Parr. Zambides moving around laterally. Zambides needs to be mobile. He doesn't want to get caught by the, in the grapple of Wayne Parr because that could be trouble for him. His strong point is his at range hands like that. Overhand right from Zambides. Body shot from Zambides. Zambides moving around agilely. Wayne Parr coming forward. Tries to line the good night Irene knee to the head. Three or four knees to the midsection and a fifth there from Wayne Park. They all tangle up against the ropes and Uncle Dave separates both men. What a gutsy first round so far. One minute remaining. Inside thigh kick from Zambides. A lot of power behind him. Wayne Park trying to zero in. Zambides working the perimeter. Not being a sitting target. Clever tactics from him. Ooh. Oh, step up knee there from Wayne Park. Caught him. Zambides in trouble. All tied up. Nowhere to go. And Zambides, well, he's taking those ones on the forearm, in fact. Well, Wayne Parr, he's just going for the body. He's not needing for the legs or the head. He's going just to break down the arms of Zambides, try and take the power from the arms of Zambides. And for one of the first times ever, Zambides looking towards his corner after that exchange, Tarek. Yes, and uh, I think he realised that he's in a bit of trouble with the grapplings and the knees, and he's trying to find a way out of it. He's trying to hack that lead leg of Wayne Parr. Never underestimate Zambides at all, but because he can always finish a fight with one big punch. That is correct. We've seen it so many times before. Again, Wayne Parr locking on. Oh, Zambini's the other hand right! Wayne Parr's been stunned! Wayne Parr was stunned by it! Back, 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 back. And the crowd rallying behind Zambini! That's what I, my, what I meant exactly. Uh, you can see that big punch, that rock, uh, Wayne. Uh, you can see Wayne's eyes wasn't there for a split of a second, but uh, the round did go uh, and then saved it. You call that one right on the money, oh Tarek. Dave Hedgecock gets us on the way. Both men touch gloves. And we're back at it. Melbourne Town Hall going off their rockets. Leg kicks again from Zambides, trying to break down that lead thigh. High left round kick from Wayne Parr. Zambides going downstairs again. Oh, left hook, right hand combination from Zambides, caught him. Beautiful combination it was from Zambides. Looks towards his corner again for approval. Zambides looking at instructions to the corner. It's good to see that Zambides is listening to his corner very carefully, but he should not look at the corner, which is very dangerous during the fight. Yeah, good pick up, Tarek, but it is the mark of an experienced fighter that oh. can communicate with a corner mid-fight. Oh, overhand right from Zambides after he took the straight right hand to the nose. Parr's going to have to keep that left hand glued to the side. Oh, of the big right hand from Zambides! That one was all the way from Athens. Leg kick from Zambides. Parr looks to have slowed down a little at the start of this round. High head kick from Zambides. Will Iron Mike turn it on now? Will he bring on the heavy artillery? Well, first round pass, second round going the way of Zambides thus far. High round kick caught on the gloves by Zambides. Beautiful sweeping inside leg kick. Nice step across and again. Zambides now, overhand right. Zambides picking up the pace now. Overhand right again. 
And Pa latching onto the back. Body shots from Zambides. Zambides got to get out of there now. And what an impressive second round, this one from Zambides. Oh, beautiful step around hook from Zambides. Now building his confidence. Oh, another big tagging right hand. The big bok choy, the big tough thumper. Overhand right from Zambides, and the break has to be usual by Dave Hedgecock. Terrence. Great to see Wayne's chink and where those big right hands. Oh, yeah. Great clean shot there. Jumping knee from Zambides. Wayne Pa smiles at him. Leg kick, outside thigh kick there from Zambides. Oh, tagging right hand from Wayne Pa. Zambides felt that one. Rushes him into the red corner. Dave Hedgecock separates both men into the final minute now. It has been one of the all time great finals in the K1 Max. Double jab, outside thigh kick from Wayne Parr. Zambini's dancing around, grooving and shaking. Nice body shot from Zambini. Another body shot from Zambini to get out of the grapple. Paul Briggs, all sorts of instructions in the blue corner. Uppercut from Zambini. Half a minute remaining now. Overhand right from Zambini. High knee from Wayne Parr. Tagging jab from Parr, all tied up again. Knees to the midsection from Wayne Parr. Body shot from Zambini. But absolutely unloading close. Zambides with the hands, Parr with the knees. Leg check there from Wayne Parr. Solid front kick defensively from Parr. Step around hook from Zambides. Nicely timed. Body shot from Zambides. End of the second round. I've got to like that one for Ryan Mike Hammer. Ryan Mike, love it away for Ryan Mike Zambides. The second round, one round Parr, one round Zambides. I think it's all falling down for the last round. Zambides and Parr. Here we go. Oh, big body shot from Zambides to open up proceedings. Round kick to the rib cage from Parr. A high left round kick from Parr. High left round kick Zambides. That step around hook again from the little Greek. Outside guy kick, flipping left hook from Zambides. He's trying to work that hook to the jaw of Wayne Parr. Ooh. Oh, foot to the mouth there. A foot sandwich from Wayne Parr. High left round kick to the head. Another defensive front kick from Parr. Oh, jumping right hand from Zambides. Dave Hedgecock separates both men. Even so far, hammer after 30 seconds. Even Stevens. Oh, I'd love to see an extension round. Oh, yeah. Body shots, head shots. Zambides. Big right hand from Zambides. Parr trying to tie him up. Man's a short right hand in close. Outside thigh kick. Zambides didn't quite come off for him. Another one checked by Wayne Parr. Zambides has to get on the inside. Wayne Parr not letting him in. Long ranging punches there from Parr. Parr trying to run up the knee. Overhand right. Came close for Zambides. Just whistled past him. Body shot from Zambides. Overhand right and again. Short left hook in close from Zambides. All tied up. Dave Hedgehog's going to separate this one in a moment. Okay, break, there break, it break, is. Let's go. Into the final minute and a Come half back. now. Tell right That's a oh. very strong fight right in the middle. I think this could go for the extra round. Zambides all over him now. Overhand right. They're slinging it out. Hammer and Tong. Always back the guy with the hammer. Knee to the break, midsection break, there from Wayne break, Parr. Break, trying break, to get break, it up to the head. It could go anyone's way. One minute 45 down. Overhand right down beat his body shots. Uppercut caught him! Uppercut caught him! Uppercut caught him! Right, 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 right. That was a good blow. Right? Good blow. Good blow. Uh, a little bit south of the border there. From my part. Zambidi's pushing it all the way down to the wild, right on the balls of his feet into the third round. Work oh, that all the way. Here right goes hand again. again. Big right hand again. The big kibosh from Zambidi. This place is alive. Outside fly kick Zambidi. They've given it their all. Overhand right Zambidi. seen anything like it. They have given it their all. Two warriors. And Zambini shakes his head, says, you haven't got the better of me yet. Body shot Zambini's up a cut at them. Well, here we're going to 
to score this oh, one, Michael. Oh, what a cracker! You know what? I'm giving it even. One round apiece, an even third round. An extension round would not be out of the question. That's the way I'm calling it. This is going to test the judges out. This is going to test the judges out. After the fight, and, and, and once again to this day, I've, I've stood there with all the confidence in the world and if you watch the tape at the end before they read the scorecard you can see Zambo looking up in the sky saying his prayers, come on lady luck. Yeah. And I was fully confident, I even looked back to my corner so when the, the announcement said red or blue I was just making sure that so when he said red I was red. Yeah. And they've called I and Mike Zambides and I was um, shell shocked, I stood there dumbfounded for about a minute and then I couldn't do it. Mark Corey scored the bout 29-29. Norman Lou scored the bout 30-28. Bryce Birdwistle scored the bout 30-29. In favour of your winner, Iron Mike Zambini. He's done it! He's done it! Iron Mike Zambini! Greatest test today, and he has come out on top by and by Zambides. Wayne Parr, heartbroken. One, one word sums up the way I feel at the moment. That's pissed. I reckon I did pretty well that fight. I reckon I deserve the win. I reckon I deserve to go to Japan. I reckon I deserve to be the best in Australia, not him, because I beat him. But controversial, that's what, yeah. that's what makes the sport. A lot of people talk about on the internet, oh, I'd John Wayne Parr, majority of his knees didn't land on, on the body. But at the same time, I blocked all of his kicks. Um, majority of his punches didn't land on my face either. A lot of my punches, his punches land on my guard. So you have to look at both sides of the coin too. You can't just say, well, my knees didn't land. His punches didn't land either. So what do you do? What do you, what do, you do? <laughs> Obviously, as we said, a, a Greek fighter that's, that's world renowned. Now we talk about a Japanese fighter that's also well renowned and, and certainly still going around now with, with great resolve is Goto. And uh, Goto, you know, very flamboyant as well. Hard as nails. Oh, as tough as they come. As tough as they come. Yeah, yeah he's, um, I, I went into the fight uh, training hard once again, very confident. I uh, hit him with some perler shots to the body and to the head uh, with elbows. Uh, it was the first time fighting shoot boxing as well. It was very similar to Muay Thai, except I had the, the throws, the and, throws and, and the locks. Seconds, yeah. In the second round, he got me in what I thought was just going to be a grapple, and I waited for the, the referee to break us and, until I found out that I was actually in a, in a choke hold and he was trying to choke me out. Um, after realising what was going on, I, I tried my best to get out of it, and, and I gave it straight back to him, not letting him get off without uh, copping a little bit of hiding for it. Uh, uh, yeah, the fight, I kid him with some brilliant shots but he um, he was so tough I can't believe he stood up to him but yeah, it was a good fight very exciting for the Gold Coast crowd and, and for the Fox Sports fans yeah well yet again another war on the Gold Coast and Queensland there seems to be a bit of a habit up here okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, then we go to uh, to Doi of course uh, another tough another tough opponent what was the game plan with him uh, I'd, I'd seen Doi numerous times he, he just fought and beaten Daniel Dawson in Japan I knew he was a, a tough Southpaw fighter that liked kicking the leg, so I, I prepared myself very well for it. Um, he, after he tried the, the, the rear leg kick from the Southpaw stance a few times, and after I checked it, there was no plan B. He didn't come to, to the town with anything else. So once I neutralised that, he was just left the sitting duck. Um, around three and four, I picked it up, and then I, I landed a good quality elbow on his head too, making him think twice before he came in. Yeah, and I dropped him a few times at the counts, and then I knew that he was pretty much on rubber leg streak. So after the, the, the last count, I ran across the ring and landed a nice flying knee. So no, it was, it was another good fight. That Par again. Knee, knee, knee from Par is a literal knee machine. Doi nowhere to go, crossing elbows. 
Wayne Park all over him like a rat. And Joy. Wow. Joy well, wants to be fighting back. He wants to be throwing some technique because Wayne Park is just unloading. Wayne Park. Demolition mission. It is sheer brutality from Park. There is nothing sweet. There is nothing fancy about it. Wayne Park wants to wreck it. Well, Park wondering what he has to do to put this Japanese opponent away. The Teflon Boy. Japanese opponent seemingly covered in the stuff. Those elbows just wiped off him. And again, Parr on the attack. Doi goes down a couple of knees. And he caught him on the jaw. And Doi's been rocked. Is it all over? Is it going to be all over? Doi can't get up or can he? This place has gone bananas there over their feet. Well, Doi taking the full Here down. comes Parr. John Bigby is airborne. Doi getting crushed like a mosquito. Oh, it's good night, I read. There it goes. Muay Thai has triumphed over shoot boxing, Michael. It is good in. night, Irene. But John Wayne Powell, the IMF World Muay Thai Champion, has taken out the World Shoot Boxing Champion, Hiroki Doi. Tried, but had no answers. Wish me luck. John yes, Wayne Powell. Wave me goodbye. <laughs> well, how about that? How much jubilation Muay Thai has defeated shoot boxing here tonight? And coming up after the break, more from Australia's greatest ring warrior, John Wayne Parr. We move on now and we, we are abroad, we're going overseas and the Super League is being hyped beyond all belief over in Europe and of course you've got your invitation to go over and fight on the Super League. I believe uh, first one up for you was um, Amrani in the Super League, Yes. again a, a, a tough competitor. Yes. How did all that come about and how was the Super League experience for you? Uh, this was my first opportunity to go to Europe and, and Holland had always been a place high up in my uh, in places to go in the world. They had a lot of tough fighters that come out of Holland and, and I wanted to go over there and, and make my mark and, and prove that I, I was the real deal. Um, uh, I got over there five days before the fight and I was still pretty much jet lagged out but at the same time I, I'd come for a, a good fight. Amrani was uh, a Moroccan based in Germany and he still had all the flashy kicks, the back kicks and the spinning kicks and everything else. Yeah. But we'd, we'd train for that. Being uh, doing Taekwondo earlier, I, I knew sort of half what to expect. Yeah, you yeah. can pick, I think having the, the, the traditional, um, traditional uh, background enabled, would have enabled you to see a lot of the chambering of the kicks yes. and a lot of the setup moves, which yep. I suppose it, all those early years started to pay dividends for you. Yep, and I, I didn't give him room to move either. I, I kept right on him, so when he did turn around for his kicks, I was, I was right there, so he didn't have his full range, he had his full power. Oh, here comes JW, the Aussie. The knee's up to the face. The knee Is he going to take Wayne Alan Riney out? Unrelenting. All tied up and the shriek separates and Wayne Parr exploding. Well, I'm on the edge of my seat with this one, Michael. I'll tell you what. Hill kick from Alan Riney. The boys are bringing it on. What, what a main event. event. And champagne. 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 <laughs> Alan Riney, what's he got left in the tank? JW's got the energy to burn. Takes a big breath, Alamrani 
he's circling off to his left, staying out of range of that right hand. Outside thigh kick from JW, step in jab. High right round kick from JW. Right hand there, step into the jaw from El Amrani. Oh, El Amrani now has got to pick it back. I'm, I've got uh, JW just ahead. Just ahead in the fifth and final. What is El Rani going to do? Jump turning, turning back, back into the midsection from El Rani. Step up jab. JW ties him up. Can he work another flurry in a hurry in the clinch here? Short range knee right. to the right rib cage. And the Sheik separates both men. Hey, and a warning oh, for a late knee. Sheik. Sheik not happy. Sheik's not happy. The boys need to keep working. This is oh so close. It's going to come down to whichever fight is busy on the ladder. Moments of this fifth and final. Wayne Powell. Oh, tagging left hand from El Amrani. Powell forced to cover up. He flies back with a high left round kick. Oh, Three Amrani punch combination. Back. Look at the evasion work from the Moroccan. Slippery. Invasive. Jab from El Amrani. Have you taken my voice to the threshold of pain? I'll tell you what, and there's some serious oh, pain being in this in the yeah, center yeah, ring. Some serious pain being slapped out by Alan Rani. JW now in the bit of bother. Here Into comes the Alan final Rani. seconds of this round, of this fight, what a corker it's been. Trying to hook from Alan Rani, then down to the bread basket. Score it up for Alan Rani there, the sidekick. Hammer about to have a cardiac arrest. Jab there from Park. Swinging wildly, way Power fires back and gun much in knee. Well, Straight right well, hand and well, left hook from El Amrani. Front kick off the lead leg and a turning back kick. Hammer of burst of blood vessel now. <laughs> El Amrani landing some good technique. JW needs to keep busy though. He's slowed up a bit. El Amrani picking it up. Oh, on turning, the turning back kick. Kick up the bell, it's all over. Well, how's it going to go, Michael? How's it going to go? Relax. How's it going to go? Here we go. Relax. Slightest of slight oh. margins over John Wayne Park. Right, we move on again, Super League. There's a couple more Super League fights we'd like to talk about. Fardi Merza. Yes. And Fardi, he's a nuggety little fighter. He hasn't got the range, but geez, he, he's got the forward movement and uh, he's got some big kahunas on him to walk into to a lot of stuff too. Yeah? He, um, he's, he was uh, one of the promoters' boys, so they were making him one of the superstars of the, of the Super League. Uh, I just fought in the S1 in Thailand um, two weeks before that. I had three fights in one day, and I was backing it up straight away with Fadi. Um, yeah, it was a nice, exciting fight. I, I did enough, just enough to, to win on points. Yep. I wasn't in a hurry to, to try and put him away because I knew I'd already had three tough fights only a couple weeks earlier, so my body wasn't in the, in the right condition to, to go out crazy, but I did just enough for, to, to get the points, and, and I was happy with the victory. Wayne Parr owning this fight for our liking, but Fadi Mansa is capable of an upset. Parr opening up like a house on fire. Those rapid hand combinations. Well, I think if Parr's going to really take this one by the throat, he has superior boxing skills. Fadi Mansa can't match it with Wayne Parr when it comes to boxing, and I think Parr wants to close the range and just starts to smash away with his hands. Straight right hand round kick, good combination. Round kick again from Parr. Menace are caught it on the forearms. Walks it through a right hand. A real tough thumper and again. Well, Fadi Menace are wearing more leather than the hammer on a Saturday night. <laughs> and Wayne Parr again dominating. Jab from Parr. Menace ties him up. I don't wear leather. Where did you get that from? I've seen you out and about on Fitzroy Street, Hammer. You're dribbling <laughs> Oh, a nice chopping left hand to the bread basket, then the right up to the jaw. Wayne Parr on fire. Front kick from Parr. Left hook from Parr. Moves in for the clinch. Negating each other's knees. Referee separates them halfway through the final round. Jab, right hand from Merza. Nothing to phase Parr. Ref breaks them again. Oh, Steen Jab. Throws oh. Mirza back in the big right hand. Turning right hand from JW. Nice technique. 
the big bok choy from John Wayne Parr. Here comes JW. Another turning hooker, high left round kick. Wayne Parr all over him like a fat kid on a cupcake. Negating knee there from Parr. Mount is going to be thinking, what can I do? And Hammer. What answer can you give him? Well, I think Fadi Mehta needs to stay at kicking range because when it comes to boxing, JW has given, a sh given him a shellacking and a half. Outside thigh kick as Mehta tries to rally back. Jab, body shot, slapping thigh kick again. That's more like it from the Austrian, but he walks into a right hand. Go, go, go! Big right hand, leg kick from Wayne Parr. Here comes Parr! A jumping knee! And that'll make Fadi the I wish he played pub darts instead. Jab from Parr. Right hand from back of Burt. All tied up now against the ropes. Wayne Parr bring it home. A couple of cracky knees into the left rib cage from Parr. While JW working the knee strikes underneath, scoring nicely as we tick down to the final moments of this one. You're it dribbling is all. on the camera again, Chavello. I can't help myself, Hammer, because JW's in centering and I'm excited. It's all one way traffic, it's all over, and it's all going to go the way of Wayne Parr. Because Hammer, as we like to say, that was champagne. champagne. And the winner of the fight is Joel Wayne Parr. Blue corner. Well, what an ovation for the ever popular guy. And uh, the, I suppose the third of the, the tough Super League boys that you were squared up against, Chico Gregory Swartz. Yeah, that you know, was, that yeah was, he was he was a real he was a real favourite again of the Super League, and there was no easy opponents for you in the Super League at all, really, was there? No. And uh, would he have been the toughest of the of the Super League lineup? No, he was actually the, the easiest. He um he was one of these guys that when he when he was orthodox, he could only punch. When he went to Southpaw, he could only kick. So we worked out a game plan that when he was orthodox, just kick, and when he goes to the Southpaw, um, just punch. So we did the opposite to what he did. Um, so yeah. I suppose a, an instance of homework really paying off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we had one of our Thai trainers out here at the time and he, as soon as he watched the video, he, he made up the game plan. He said, oh, look at this bloke, this is easy. So every time he switched, yeah, we just keep jump on him. And then it was one of those nights where everything clicked. So just in the right, right state of mind, right fitness. Um, it, it was fun actually because I'd, whoever won was going to win a PlayStation 2 and whoever lost was going to get a cowbell as their trophy. Because it, was, because it was in Holland. So uh, Switzerland. 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 Oh, that's right. So, um, yeah, I come home with the PlayStation 2. You got the PlayStation 2, no cowbell. No cowbell, no oh, cowbell. No. I had to buy one at the souvenir shop. <laughs> Double jab from Spurts. Double jab oh, on the right hand. The big kibosh and down goes Spurts. The big kibosh from JW caught him swiftly. Oh, well, that's going to just make JW the Aussie scorecard look a whole lot healthier. Okay, here we go, fourth round of five, and JW may have smelled blood. Chico's taking a shot and he's gone down! Well, Chico, his face hurt, his ribs broke, or not broken, they've been badly damaged. Certainly winded. JW's caught him sweetly. Smack, bang on the rib cage. Armband's fallen down, ref hinges it up, and JW ready to pounce on him. Here he comes! Oh, the jumping knee! Round kick from JW! Round kick again from JW! Sturts ties him up! Come on, Aussie! The crowd rallying now behind JW and down goes Sturts! He can't match the power of JW! Don't you get it out now! Short range right hand from Parr! Front kick from Parr! Front kick again from Parr! Jam from Spurts, Parr ties him up. Cut munching, shot to the ribs there, off the right knee from Parr. Front kick to the midsection, trying to put the belly button through the back. He's hurting, he's hurting voice. He is Spurts breaking is hurting. down Gregory Spurts. Take the body and the head will follow. Hammer, it's been Champagne Wayne Parr in this round. This is the Wayne Parr we all know and love. John Wayne Parr doing the Aussies proud. Oh, Drew Reese first taking more knocks at the front door. Jumping knee from Parr. Spurs forces him back into the blue corner, hanging on for dear life. It is all one-way traffic and Spurs is being owned. Hey, time 
Park, confident. High left round kick on the forearms, breaking down the defences of Spurts and the game. Spurts confound and he doesn't know what to do. He's hurting, he's hurting. He's switched to Spurts. again, Grigory Spurts. Hurting. He's trying to protect his body. Park smiling at him saying, son, I've got a big one coming for you. Spurts has got nothing left it seems, nothing that can phase Wayne Park. Front kick from Park. Outside thigh kick from Parr. Now Spurts finding orthodox again. Oh, showing a lot of heart though is Grigory P. Spurts. Round kick from Spurts. Round kick from Parr. The right hand's got there it. There he goes. Down goes Spurts. The big kibosh. The big kibosh. It's all over. It's good night, Irene. That's how you do it down under style. JW is the oh. king of the Super League. The Buntu boy has done it and done it in style, the Aussie. But a great victory to the Aussie, Michael. I may have ruptured my larynx, but it's worth it. Have a look at JW. He pounds Gregory's first to the canvas. He was all over him. Have a look at the sheer power. Smack bang on the schnoggin. One to the side of the neck. Four unanswered shots and down went Spurt. The Aussie flag proudly draped over the shoulders of Jay Tubbier and what a confounding, pounding victory for John Wayne Parr. He is the king of the Super League. The Super League experience was certainly, uh, I suppose, for your rewarding one and, and big raps because they were only choosing the best fighters in the world. So that being uh, put to bed, I suppose, you were squared up against uh, Sakun Khan. Yes. And uh, again, I suppose a fighter that you would have well heard of before you even stepped in the ring against him. And is it daunting to, to come up against a Thai legend like that, knowing, knowing the history of living in Thailand? Uh, going to Thailand in, in 1996, there was a, a tournament on the time called uh, the Beer Chung and Sangten was involved, and Satman Khan and all these guys. And I remember, out of all the fighters in Thailand, Satman Khan was my hero from 1996 onwards. Every time we fight, it's just like, oh, I've got to watch this, this is going to be awesome. And no doubt it was. And he was the strongest kicker and the highest work rate, and I just had so much respect for him. And then all these years later, the opportunity came, oh, do you want to fight Satman Khan? And I, I got to that level then, I thought, yes, I do. I do want to fight him. I do, if I beat him, uh, all that work over the years would all be worth it. And um, well, I, I, oh, I was, I was going to say that was a fight where obviously the extension round came into play. Yes. You, you battled for three, went to the fourth. Um, my scorecard, again, you know, on the commentary, what I've said is, is noted for all to hear. I believe the fourth round was yours. You had to come back for the fifth. Surprise to everyone in the auditorium. Absolutely shock. How did you feel? Um, I was gutted. I, I, after three rounds, it could have gone either way. And then when the extension round was, I, I knew that there was three minutes. So I just gave it every single thing I had. Uh, even when I was halfway through the round, I was a little bit um, puffed. But I pushed myself through because this was my opportunity. This is what I'd been waiting for my whole life. And then after the bell went for the fourth, I, I even went up on the ropes to um, acknowledge the crowd that, that that was my fight. And they gave me the, um, the applause and everything else. And I, for that, before they read out the announcement, I, I, was, I lived the dream. <laughs> I've beaten my hero, this is unbelievable. And then everyone in my corner saying, come back, come back, just in case. What are you talking about? There's no way no one. And, I've, and then I've read out the cards and they've said, uh, it's a draw, we've got another round. And then uh, I'd, I'd spent all my pennies in the fourth. I'd absolutely given everything I had, but that was my opportunity to, pro to prove that if I wanted it, this was, I had to get back out there and do it. So then the Next three quarters of the round, I was neck and neck. I was, think, I still believe I just, just could have necked in. And then Satman Khan probably in the last 30 seconds landed two or three unanswered kicks I didn't block in time. And with his experience and just after 250 fights, you, you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, no regrets. I, I know I did my best that night and I, I got to fight one of the best, so you can't get Well, you have been, you, you have been, I suppose, victim to some Dubious decisions, there's no doubt about that. And, and I would say that was probably, in my mind, one of the most obvious, but there's one more to come. But before that, okay, let's have a, let's have a talk about the Par Preacher series, where it all started. Number one, 
At Chandler Arena, capacity crowd, the anticipation was huge. Head to head on the cover of International Kickboxer, the expectation was massive. Tell us about that first fight. Uh, yeah, that was, that was another very exciting fight. Preacher, Preacher was one of the best uh, uh, super waterweights in the country. Um, and I knew it was, he, he went up to middleweight and I knew it wasn't going to be long before I got the challenge because I was, I was number one in the country at, at middleweight and if he wanted to prove himself around the world, I was the man he had to get past. Um, the challenge did come. Uh, um, we got to the arena and, and the atmosphere was amazing. Just looking around and, and seeing Chandler full, that was the first time we'd been there. Um, and, and Preacher come to fight, he wasn't going to lay down at all. He, the opening bell was gone and he, he ran at me and gave it everything he had. Um, so yeah, we just we just the kept the floor. kept the momentum going for five rounds and the, the crowd early. got their money's worth. The suggestion is Pa will be the one starting early. The could be just trickling a little bit from the nose of McPhee. Some vicious leg kicks from both men. Round number one. The JW going hunting with the elbows now. Doesn't want to turn it into a kick fight because of the, the uh, cut on the shin. It's only going to get worse. And he really wants to make sure that he keeps uh, that shin protected. Bruce McPhee. He's got a good solid game plan working on the outside now. He knows if he gets in range, Wayne Parr's going to let that right round elbow crack down. Oh, the right hand. McPhee has been rocked. Now Parr goes to work. Turning a spinning, elbow. turning over. McPhee is down. McPhee is down. In the neutral corner. The count is on. Six, he'll get up. seven, he'll get up. eight, nine. JW is in the mind it's of Bruce McPhee. Here he is again. again. McPhee is on the way down. Somehow he holds on. Somehow he holds on. Well, Christian Trimin got, got to be careful. He's not getting on the, uh, the side of the ring there. He's got to stay in the corner. JW now about to tee off at range. McPhee's got to be oh, Beautiful right hand. He is down again. Will he be saved by the bell? We've got to be close to the end of the second. There, there is the bell. He's saved by the, the bell. The bell signals. It saves Bruce McPhee oh. from almost certain defeat. McPhee looked over at Brian oh. Murphy. Midway through the break. And give him a bit of a wink. Gave him a wink and said, I'm fine. But could it be all theatre? Could it be all gameplay? McPhee now teeing off on Park. This is the final round. Such a blast there from our referee Brian Murphy. Just said to both boys, well done. Well, I think. Uh... Oh, McPhee has been rocked. Parr looking for the right hand. He wants to finish it. McPhee is out on his feet. McPhee is rocked backwards. Parr over the top. What does John Wayne Parr have to do to stop Bruce the Preacher McPhee? He fires back McPhee. He finds that little bit of heart. That little bit of digging deep. He's found it and he's fought straight back. He's given it his all the Preacher. I'll tell you what. This is a stellar fight for him, whatever way you cut it. But uh, JW all class and like a surgeon is, uh, is at work operating in centre ring. Pa, ahead on the judges' scorecards. Would love to finish it in style. Would love to finish it inside the 15 minutes. Just a push kick again from John Wayne Park. Why not? He is in control. Letting his hands do the talking at the moment. Feigning and again using that right hand. Well, I think McPhee's doing a bit of a doing a bit of a rocky now. Just wants to see the fight out. Wayne Park calling him on. And Wayne Park's got to be careful as they turn this into a ball. It has been outstanding. Well, Christian Troyming's got to get out from the, uh, go, from the ring up, apron. He shouldn't even be on there. That left shin of Wayne Parr would be killing him about now. It's, uh, it's very, very clever tactics how he's turned it into a boxing fight. Andy Raymond, he's left the kicks out and just uh, preserved the yep. lead nicely. 
McPhee has cut and he takes another right hand. That overhand right of John Wayne Park has been outstanding tonight. This main event has been outstanding tonight. Well, I tell you what, Evolution 6, I'll say the show of the year, and this is certainly the fight of the year, the best for 2005. Bring on right Evolution now. 7. I tell you, it can only get better. It's unbelievable. Here comes oh. the preacher. Preacher looking to the heavens for one last favour. It would be a fairy tale. The oh, two knees. exchange. Knees. Oh, the two men standing there. They are going toe to toe. Spectacular finish. McPhee. McPhee is going to get again. Parr looking to finish it with a knockout. John Wayne Parr looks in disbelief. What do I have to do? Evolution 6. What a match. What a success. What a night. I tell you what, Andy Raymond, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. K1, you can have it. Queensland is the place to be. Raw heart, raw ability, raw courage. You gotta love it. Bruce McPhee remains in the blue corner and can be proud of his efforts. Both men are gonna wake up sore tomorrow. Oh, I tell you what, Andy Raymond, I'm taxed just watching that fight. Absolutely taxed. This is how it went down. That was all go to the final bell. Full ball, full throttle. Both men give it their all. They had nothing. They didn't have a penny left to spend. And I tell you what, Bruce the Preacher McPhee has got a heart as big as Farlap because he took some big shots and a lesser fighter would have folded and stayed down and sucked canvas for the night. But McPhee got up time and time again. He was in the fog a number of times. He was caught a number of times. The winner tonight from the red corner, John White victorious we have two winners in centering at the moment for mine both men absolutely outstanding it takes a big heart and a lot of guts to, to call me out after i've been doing so much overseas um i gotta take my hat off to bruce after the third round i dropped in twice and he had the balls to get back up and keep blowing me all the way to the end so big round of applause to bruce huge heart johnson fly yep of course, the Fairtex fighter of, of world renown, and as a young man, he's only going to get better. But he was unknown here until he stepped into the ring against you. How did that, how did that one uh, go for you in your own mind before uh, you stepped in? Yeah, I, I was only, I fought Preacher. I had a three round war with Preacher. I, I split my shin, ended up getting six stitches in my shin, so I couldn't kick left because um, the Yotzen guy was only three weeks later. That so. was only three weeks later, sure. So I, I've, I couldn't kick left for the whole lead up. Um, I, in the back of my mind, it was playing up a lot because I thought as soon as it busts, so I'm thinking to myself, if it busts again, I just get stitched again, no dramas. Uh, I went in there full of confidence. I fought a lot of ties before. I, I've fought nearly over probably 40 ties in my career of, of 87 fights. Um, so fighting ties wasn't a drama. But this was my opportunity to fight. Well, probably, I'm, I'm probably the only Australian to ever fight a current Lumpini champion. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is, it doesn't get bigger than Lumpini. Did you, did you do your homework with the Odson Clyde before you took yes. the fight? Were you specifically training for him? Or was because of the, the time after the Preacher War? Yep. I mean, really, I don't know if that, yeah. for mine, it would have probably too close to yep. take on someone with such a big grab. Yeah, it was definitely too close. Um, being a professional fighter, I have to fight as much as I can to survive off my prize money. But at the same time, I didn't do myself any justice. It wasn't only three weeks apart. And I also had the challenge challenge um, with the shin but also he was a southpaw so going from orthodox fighter and then changing the southpaw fighter in three weeks is, is also very tricky. He to this day he's probably definitely the best fighter I've ever fought. Yeah. I, was, I was unloading with six punch combos and for him to miss to slide half an inch either side of my punches was I've never experienced that so in you, my life. You rate him over any of your boxing opponents as well? Definitely he's, he's the smartest fastest strongest fighter I've ever fought. Um, oh, first round was all, well not all him, but it was n nothing in it. Yeah. And then I, I didn't worry at the time because I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to catch you eventually. And when I do, I'm going to knock you out. Um, the second round, we were moving around and he, from a southpaw stance, he's faked with the, the front leg. Mm. And I've gone to parry and as he's parried, he's come over the top with the left, copping me right on the jaw. And, and the 
it felt like I'd been picked up and then slammed on the canvas by 10 blokes. <laughs> and then um, after that, I just lost my game plan. I, I just went out the window and I was just running automatic after that. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, even, even after the fight, I, I said from the microphone and I got up on the ropes to apologize to the crowd. And it wasn't until I watched the video that I realized what I'd done. Because yeah. I had no recollection, just the knockdown just, just made everything fuzzy. A rematch with him? Yeah, would why not? Be, would that be something that you'd like to redeem? Yeah, definitely. Um, sure enough, he, he knocked me down and he beat me on points, but I'm, I'm not scared of any man in my weight division. I'll jump in with anyone. I've, I've done enough fights now to, to... And if I want to be the best, I can't dodge people. Yeah. Um, this is my life and I want to be known, I'll be remembered when, when I retire as, as one of the greats. So to do that... And, and to get a champion to, by any stretch. To get a to get a win over him and to beat him for a world title or a Olympian title, yep. or just to beat him. Yep. Okay, we're back to the controversial decisions again. And again, you know, um, I was left unfounded after calling this one. And this this was a fully corporate event, actually something different. It was the fight for a cause show, of course, benefiting uh, male prostate cancer, and the fighter you were up against was one of uh, the most busiest fighters in Thailand from the Sipalek Jing, Wanlop. Now Wanlop, I think, is really a counterfighter and that could have been uh, where the judges maybe had a bit of a faux pas there, I feel. Yeah, Wanlop, once again, was exactly the same as Satmakon. He was in the Beer Chung tournament also. Another fighter I'd, I'd watched fight for many, many years. He also fought Seng Ten. Um, and but I, I believe I had the goods, so I wasn't intimidated in the slightest. He'd actually come out and fought Preacher not long before that, and he paid no respect to Preacher. Opening round, he came out all guns blazing, and I thought that's what he might have tried to do to me, but he, he fought me a totally um, different style. He just used the counters, like you said. Um, I th think I outworked him with the hands. Um, I, I, my defense was solid. Um, he, land, he did throw me in the grapple twice, but besides that, I think I think I did enough to score enough. Um, but once again, it's out of my control. You can only do what you can do against your opponent, and then once the decision comes in, it's out of your hands. Well, unfortunately, you know, we're here in boxing and kickboxing hometown advantage, but a couple of occasions there, it doesn't seem to uh, apply to John Wayne Parr. But uh, nevertheless, an absolute war and uh, a hero of the sport you fought. So yeah, one lap uh, wasn't to be. Totally Parr landed some good shots. But uh, I'm going to go even, so we'll give it even. Last round I gave to one lop, round before that even, and the first round to par. So it's dead even, and it's down to the fifth and final. They open up in the fifth. Okay, here we go. Up again from Wayne Parr. The hands have certainly been the better weapons for Wayne Parr. Both men have traded thunderously. Oh, kicks and have a look go. at that. Kick for kick here. Here we go. Final round. Good work, right from par. One lop fires back. They are pulling there out all the stops, four punch Gallop, combination from JW. Pa is not relenting. Inside thigh kick, then the front kick to the midsection. Checks the low kick from one lock. Straight jab from Pa, Bloody then shot. to the body and the uppercut, off the right hand. Well, whatever way you cut it, Michael, it's going to be make for a very interesting affair against Preacher. Similar efforts against one lock from Pa and Preacher. And the showdown is definitely locked on. Wayne Parr certainly bringing it home strongly here in the fifth and final. Knee guard from Parr. Inside flying kick from one lock. Parr edges forward. He's got that thunderous right hand. The big bok choy is cocked and ready for action. Outside fly kick, but one lop just raises the shin to check it. Well, oh, there's a straight right hand! This is a real chess game, this one, a real arm wrestle. Wow, that right hand was smack bang on the kiss up. The follow up elbow didn't connect for JW. Short taggy right hand to the side of the jaw there. We're moving into the final stages here of the final round. It is still a oh. the taking overhand elbow! Looking for the gash maker, the Queensland souvenir. The uppercut from Pa, double jab outside thigh kick from one lock. Well, it's the fifth and final, and uh, I've got it even. The winner of this round will be the winner of the bout on my scorecard, unofficially, of course. Who's still got the petrol left in the tank? Who's still got the pepo to keep it going here? And one lock just up ending Wayne Park in the red corner. 
trying to get the hook off oh. par and the nice uppercut again. Rocks the head back at one look. Here comes par. JW on a roll now with the handiwork. Well, one look wearing more leather than the village people in that exchange. The crowd rallying behind the local superstar JW. All tied up and the move separates them. JW has brought this one home a treat here in the final round. He has been the busier. He's been the aggressor, and he's landed the better shots. Jumping round kick from JW. Oh, hammer. I've taken my voice beyond the threshold of pain on this one, well, but it has been worth it. It's a real nail biter, edge of the seat stuff. There it is, fifth and final round. Wow, five rounds of Muay Thai action, a fitting main event. The team from Sipolek Gym think they've got it. Wayne Parr's corner think they've got it. Oh, what do you have to do, Wayne Parr, to win a fight in Queensland? Well, dejection for Parr. We thought he had it after a stellar final round. You've had a couple of losses now, albeit controversial, I suppose. And the young guns, the young chargers are thinking it's time for a change of the guard and it's their time. The first one to step up against you was, of course, the pretty boy of kickboxing in Sydney, Greg Foley. And uh, Greg Foley, not a bad mover, and also someone who's ventured into the boxing ranks. Yeah, uh, he also came in the, to the fight with a, with a big reputation. He'd fought in the Preacher, and, he, and he's done a lot in New South Wales. He also went, he tried his hand at boxing with Jeff Finnick. Um, I wasn't underestimating in the slightest. I trained hard. Uh, I, I prepared hard for um, his solid hand work. Uh, the first round, uh, I, I put the pressure on hard. Paul, Paul was in my corner, Paul Briggs, and he, he said, hit him hard and scare him. And I did that. And then after the second, uh, I, I'd land a jab and he'd sit there and shake his head. And once, once he started doing that, I knew that the fight was mine. And he, I knew he didn't want to be there anymore. So um, I just kept the pressure up. The fourth round, I, I landed a nice right hand to, to put him down from the canvas for an eight count. Well, Foley now looking to be a little spent. He certainly... Uh Showed flashes of brilliance with Paz, straight back on the job. Have a look at that nice evasion from Paz. And after that count, I, I tried to jump on him, thinking, thinking this, is, this is it, I'm going to put him away. And um, So I went crazy in the corner, unleashed with a who knows how many combo, punch combo. Uh, and then out of nowhere, I got hit with this uppercut that uh, sat me right on my bum. He's rattled, but he's OK. Paz going to be straight back on the job now. Oh, Greg Foley in trouble. It might be time to call. That's just crazy stuff. Polly Foley pulling the uppercut out of nowhere. You survived it? Yeah, uh, the bell went and it wasn't, I wasn't that I was dizzy or anything. It was just a flash knockdown. I got up smiling and I, I was actually happy for him because it made the fight more exciting now. Yeah. And uh, funny enough to believe it is true. And then, yeah, I went back to the corner after the bell ring and got my composure. And, and then that, after that, I just played the game. I was winning, so I didn't have to do anything silly. So I just, just teeped and left kicked and teeped and left kicked. And yeah, then, yeah, I got the point. So it's all good. Now, yeah. Soren. Uh, measured up against yourself and I suppose it's a little bit of a, a flip there. He's, he's grown up seeing you be the king of the sport and having to square up against you. Yeah, um, the fight, I didn't have nothing till December and Josh ran me out of the blue and said, oh, look, we haven't got an opponent for Soren, would, would you like to jump on board and, and fight Soren? And like I said before, I have to fight to survive. I've got a family. The gym pays for itself, but besides that, I've I got to fight. And um, they said, they said we, their budget wasn't very big, um, but would you like to fight anyway? And then being a fighter, you got to fight. So, so I said, yeah, no worries. And, and we trained hard again. And um, I was on a high from Foley, and I, I, I don't like losing. So I, I trained hard. And, it, and this, that night, that was the start of something special because all of a sudden, I'm, I'm feeling more relaxed and I'm, I'm picking my shots. And, and these last two fights have been amazing. I've changed a little bit of my training routine. I'm incorporating different things now and it's paying off in the ring, as, as you can see. Intimidation factor here! Oh. The big kibosh! He's, he's in and he's out of range, Pa. There goes Oh, the have a look at the hand skills that made Wayne Pa a former Australian boxing champion! 
Ah has tenderised the lead leg of Moncontin. Moncontin still sitting back against the ropes. Crossing elbow from Park. There's a cut over the left eye of Soren Moncontin. But the Murph says we're OK to go on with things. Parr edges forward. Will he sling the round kick? Will he fire the overhand elbow? The round kick it is. Inside thigh kick, shot to the rib cage. Oh, Soren Moncontin taking more hits than a surprise. movement, he's got that cut over the left eye, it's not looking great. Little phase now, Moncontin. Wayne Parr all over him like Paris Hilton on the home video camera. What could Soren Moncontin do? High left round kick from Parr. High left round kick, trying to loop the shit around the back of the neck. I want to see Soren just pop that front kick a bit more, keep Parr off him, maybe work off the jab a little more. He's got to back himself, the young fella. He's got to, he's got to let the technique fly. Soren spins off to his right. Can he survive the round here? The right hand falls short for Wayne Parr. Looking for the big bok choy. Oh. The big kibosh! The big kibosh! My word! If Wayne Parr invents a time travel, he's just sent him back to 1943! Hammer! That was a tracking right hand! Well, uh, Soren Monkadon just got caught cold. And it's the most hamstrung I've seen Mongaton fight. Usually it flows a lot better than that and lets it go. But I think tonight just a little in awe. It's been missing from you for a while, mate, eh? Just a little bit in awe at uh, being in centre ring on such a huge event How are the against words? the living legend of John Wayne Parr. How are the words there from the Murph Hammer? You've been missing in action for a little while, but you're back in town now, he says to Wayne Parr. Do you envisage maybe trying to put different uh, attacks in your repertoire as you, as you move on into 2007? Um, I would consider myself as a complete fighter. I was, I was lucky enough to go to Thailand to get the, my bottom half uh, like a tie. I went to boxing for a year to get my top half um, conventional boxing, and now I've incorporated two. I, with my training, I try and flow from one technique to the other. I don't punch and stop, yep. and I don't kick and stop. I want to be able to throw a punch into a kick, into a knee, into an elbow, or while running across the ring and intimidating someone <laughs> as, as much as I can. Um, and the defence plays a big part in your, yes, in yes. your game plan as well. I mean, you know, as I said, your defence is very, very solid. When I, when I first went to Thailand, I was only 19, and I thought I was, had the goods. Hmm. And then I did some kick sparring with the boys that were um, half my age, and they just made a mockery out of me. And I was devastated I thought how can this be I'm the South Pacific champion and these people know who I am <laughs> and then these kids were just tearing me apart and the trainer said look whatever you think you know I want you to forget everything okay we're gonna start again and we're gonna work on defense he said anyone can attack anyone can hit anyone but how many people know how to block mm. that made sense yeah. so then we took it step by step and then repetition after repetition now now I don't even have to think about defending uh, someone attacks me and my defence is there, Reflex. so that, that muscle memory is always ticking over. And coming up after the break, more great moments with Australia's greatest warrior, John Wayne Parr.
Okay, well, you guys definitely have the most unique marriage in the Australian fight game. Tell us a little bit about how you met. Um, I got offered a job in America in 2002, uh, fighting and training at Adam Master Toddy's gym. Uh, when I first got to the gym, there was all these posters everywhere of this girl with uh, medals and trophies and stuff. Uh, and she was a bit of a looker. And uh, Angie hadn't been at the, the gym at that stage. And I'm asking everyone, who's this girl? And they said, oh, that's Angie. She's going to be here soon, a couple of days. And then um, I was staying at the camp at Master Toddy's. And, and that afternoon, Angie rocked up with a friend. And I went over to her and I said, oh, you're the girl that won the gold medal. And then what turned into a, to a little conversation ended up lasting like four or five hours. And after that, we had to train every morning, every afternoon. And we just become inseparable. And after a week or so, we went on our first official date to the Bellagio Hotel for a, a buffet feed. And, uh, nice, nice. and then uh, we went and to champagne. A, and yeah, we had a couple of drinks and then yeah, just things just progressed from there. Okay, well, Angie, obviously you're one of the state's most well known female fighters. What was your impression of Wayne when you first met him? Um, I thought he was really nice. And uh, he first thing he asked me is, oh, So you won the gold medal? And I'm like, Yes. And I, I thought more highly of myself than I knew of him. And I was like, oh, so he's just another fighter coming to train with us. And then the more I got to know who he was, I was like, wow, he's really famous. And in America, they didn't quite know about him. It took a, a little while for the Americans to, um, when he, they watched him fight. And then when he fought in Thailand in the, S, um, in the S1, that made him more famous in America and, and gave him a bigger name. But yeah, I was, I was impressed. You're training in the States. Did you actually start working out together over there and helping each other out? Every day we were running together, eating. Um, we did our pad sessions. Um, we every, at breakfast, oh, oh, oh. lunch, dinner, training, and it was it made training a lot easier. <laughs> like trying to impress each other on the pads and and skipping, and we're skipping, smiling. We got in trouble for it. Yeah, Master Tidy, <laughs> Master Tidy wasn't happy. He said, um, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna have eyes, just don't keep it in the gym. You two are supposed to be single, so the female's gonna come and the male's gonna come <laughs> thinking you're both single. Oh, we couldn't help it. We were in love. Well, obviously now we're back to reality at home. Judge is in the background there having a bit of a play with her toys, and you guys have uh, settled into is somewhat normality, I suppose. But managing a family, a gym, fighters, your own careers, how difficult is that, especially with a very active little daughter? It, it's, it has its moments. Um, Angie's just starting to get back into a full swing now because before when when, Jazzy, when she was pregnant of course she couldn't do anything and then in the first couple of years Jazzy was too small to, to allow her to train but now Jazzy's a little bit older she can keep herself occupied Angie, watching no, either no, TV or playing television or something, something else in the gym. Yeah, um, we, we can't still fight on the same promotion at this stage. It's too hectic. I've, too much stress. It, I've got to be on one show and she has to be on another one because I have to train. And he works my corner so yeah. if he's not going to go and work my corner and get all excited before his fight and mm. and just it's good that we can have our own our own light and and day so yeah. instead of being both of our day we have our own independence of it. well you both have to prepare for these fights your moods and fighters moods in general before bouts can vary yes i i I like to tell her that I'm a firecracker <laughs> and my, my fuse is only, only this big so if she rubs me the wrong way there's a chance I'm going to explode. So um, she. We both get emotional and, and stuff and for a long time I couldn't figure it out. I was really upset like how angry we would get at each other and how much we didn't like each other and then I was like it's fight time and we just got to brush it off and, and just deal with it and after the fight when we win we feel good and when we lose we we know get a little bit sad together and but that's we just good. get over it and it's suicidal <laughs> no <laughs> the, there's um last couple of days when it's time to cut weight too it's um definitely a place where you, you don't want to be around okay just going forward your plans going forward for both of you fighting wise wayne you obviously just come off a huge win where to from here for both of you we just want to continue fighting and making names for ourselves and not very, not too many people are doing it as a huge team together and we see ourselves as a team and we're both representing the male and the female and we just want to continue to be number one and, and strong and make some fans. <laughs> yeah, oh, just, um, just fight as much as possible. Yeah. Just um, we not only do, does it support our lives but we just love it. Well, you've now established your gym, and it's a, it's a great little gym. It's, a, it's got a good atmosphere and good setup and facilities there. 
Um, it's a business at the end of the day though and you've got to manage that business and the bookkeeping and everything else comes into it. How is that impacting on your life as well? Um, when I've got a fight come up, the um, majority of the time I take care of the, the, uh, the train and then I take care of the classes and Andy teaches the classes and she takes care of the bookwork and everything else. That's it's half-half. He That's teaches right. in the morning, I'll teach at night, or vice versa. And then um, I do all like the paperwork and stuff, and yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> he cleans a bit, and because it's our pride and joy. We, we like teaching classes too, because it's we try to give it a, a nice um, family environment. We don't just look at fighters. We want to have mums and dads and kids and everyone coming in, and everyone are all ages to come and enjoy the sport. Yeah. Um, it's not just about fighting; it's, it's an art. Well, obviously, little Jazzy is on the scene now. Are there any plans for any more children? Um, I, I'm happy with her. We did good on one, and I mean, if another one came, we'd be really happy. But we'd probably keep it. <laughs> if another one came, we'd probably keep it. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but she's now at that age where she can go to the gym and have a good time. Before, I was, it was hard with not having much family and. And she needed me all the time, and now it's good because I can focus on my career, and, and she can, she can play, and, and she gives me my water in between rounds. It, so it was good. funny on the I picked Angie up from the hospital, and then we brought her home, brought Jazzy home for the first time, and I was actually half an hour late. I was 15 minutes late for class, so I had to divert and go straight to the gym, teach class, to, uh, do a little bit of the gym. So, so she went to the gym before she even got home. So she's been in the gym every every day since. Well, it sounds like you guys have a great successful formula working, the family, the gym and everything. So let's hope that it continues on. Thank you. Here he comes! The leg slinging, rip cracking, elbow smashing, headache making, heart breaking, career ending, John Wayne Parr! Preacher number two, revenge or repeat, it ended up being repeat. Let's yeah. close that chapter, I suppose, and run us through it. Um. This, this was definitely the highlight for 2006, the Preacher fight. There, there was a lot of talk and um, Preacher did his job of, of talking up and making the fight exciting. Um, he, he, had a, he had a few wins and, and he was full of confidence. And he, wasn't, he, was, he wanted to prove a point to the Australian public that he was the man. Um, yeah, I was feeling awesome after following, after Soren, no one was gonna beat me. And, and as much as Preacher's a nice guy, there was no way knowing that I was going to let him beat me. If he beat me, that'd be devo. I'd be so <laughs> upset. So, um, yeah, I, I trained hard. But he did, I, he did give it a good shot. Yeah, he showed he, a lot of heart. Yeah, he, he, you know, he sustained a lot of damage. Yeah, I, I, I rate Preacher, even though I beat him. Like, I, I still enjoy watching him fight. He's still a, a, a good character, and um, he's still great for Australian kickboxing, for sure. He, he brings a lot of crowd, and, and nah, he's, he's fun. But, but on, on the night, for me, after fighting so many incredible opponents around the world, I can't afford to lose to anyone in Australia. That yeah. I, I want to be, I want to be the man. Okay. So, well. but but we had a we had a very exciting fight. The round I can't believe exactly how round the first fight with Preacher is identical to the second fight. In round three, I dropped in. Love one. Oh, oh, that was I've gone back to the corner where Brian was giving an eight count and I was actually thinking to myself while I was getting my breath, I thought, I wonder if I'm going to drop him again just before the bell. And then, um, sure enough, I've, I've planted that right, what was it, right hand? Oh, I've dropped him anyway. And then, um, as Brian's counting, I've heard ding. And I, I was walking back to my corner, I thought, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> you have got to be kidding. How the hell did that just happen? So yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. going to go for the kill. Up again. Preacher's taking more hits than a piñata. Chase Jenga is all over him, like a fat kid on a cupcake. This place has gone absolutely crazy. Preacher in all sorts of bother. He takes another right hand. He fights back though. Good half for the Preacher. This is a, this is a classy stuff from the Preacher. Hard, come up and stop him now.
drama. We relax. We don't go silly. We relax. What I want you doing? Keep that jab on his nose. Right hands to the sternum. We head into 2007, and there's new challenge abounding for you. Of course, the cage fight. Then you would have done it all: boxing, kickboxing, Thai boxing, and of course the cage fight coming up. But really, why do you need to do it? Tony Benelli um, rang me out of the blue. Uh, Angie's fought three months before and, and we've, we've, we've formed a, a friendship. And he rang me up and he said, look, I can bring a guy from overseas to fight. I can give him a lot of money, but no one's gonna know who he is at the end of the day. He said, you're the, the best stand-up fighter in Australia. How about I offer you the fight instead? And um, at first, it's, it's my whole career, I've watched MMA, a lot of MMA, and it's never really interested me. But um, he offered me, a lot of money, um, and and I'm open to new challenges. It's the it the thing is it's a in a cage. I've never fought in a cage. It's totally different to the ring. I've never done any MMA training in my life, um, and it's open weight. So he's going to be approximately 92 to 95 kilos. I'm going to try and get as big as I can. So I walk around about 80. So I want to try and get to about 85. So still got to have a, well, it'd be a, about a 10 kilo weight advantage at, his way, at least, and also. You know, he's, he's a champion and the king, king of the cage yep. events, so he's, he's a very well-schooled grappler yeah, and ground a, fighter. I think he's a black belt in BJJ. He's also 15-0 uh, in the cage. Um, he's, he's about 6'1 or so. He's got a lot of reach on me. He's got the weight advantage. Uh, but I'm going to be going to America. I'm going to be studying as much as I can, all my uh, defence and sprawling and all these new words that I'm learning. <laughs> um, and i am got a fighter's chance with those MMA gloves on. You never know if I can land something out of the blue. Well, let's not give away if, too much, but yeah. there's, if, a, there's, if, a, there's a puncher's chance in every fight, if, as they say. Well, we've sort of we've covered your history from a, from a little tucker to, to the world champion. We have to get your opinion on the current fighters going around the country at the moment, and indeed across the, across the globe. Yep. Who are the young guns, the up-and-comers that you rate now? Who, who are the, the fighters? that you would say to me, how am I keep an eye out for these guys because I can see a little bit of, you know, achievement coming their way in, in the long term? Um, I couldn't go without saying a few of my own boys out of the gym. Um, I've got a young a couple of up-and-comers coming. I've got um, Blake No Loss Loss. I've got Philip Street that's coming up. I've got Thor Hoopman that's doing really well after only six fights. On the Australian scene, there's definitely, definitely Preacher. He's proven time and time again that he's, he's, the, he's one of the best. Um, Simon Monk on time, he's matured tenfold since we fought, uh, proven that his last fight. Overhand elbow, still up elbow, crossing elbow. He's got more elbows than something with a lot of elbows! And Soren is the ball in this round! That's we also got um, uh, Michael Tomahawk. Uh, he's, he's just a young kid that's Tomahawk Thompson. He's doing, he's doing awesome after only eight or nine fights. Daddy Cool, Dane Daddy Cool. He, after, after being so young in, in, in so young in the sport to fight the ties and, and to knock him out and to, to be as exciting as he is is, is a big credit to himself. We also got Eli Madigan. Man, this kid's, this kid's got some talent. If you really want to watch out for someone, he hasn't had much of an opportunity to fight on Fox yet, but, but I think with the next couple of years, if you watch out for him, I think he's going to make a big name for himself. Um, we've also got Sawinski. Yeah, mate, how, how, how good is this bloke? He's, how, how, <laughs> how many WMC titles do you want? He's um, gone from three or three with different weight divisions, I believe, three or four. He's, he's fought in the K1 now. He's, he's won the K1 Oceana. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a credit to, to Australia. Well, JW, it's been, uh, it's been fantastic. Thanks for sharing a day in the life of John Wayne Parr and family, of course. It's been inspirational talking to you and, and having a look back through all the great moments that we've enjoyed. And uh, I know, speaking for myself, it's been an honour. And of course, all the Fox Sports viewers, I'm sure, will have enjoyed the journey. Thank you very much. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm so lucky. Uh, I'd like to thank yourself, um, Fox Sports, International Kickboxer, and uh, the Australian public for all your support all those years. Um, and it's been a pleasure. Uh, and thank you. Okay, we look forward to seeing you back in centre ring doing what you do best, taking care of business. Beautiful. <laughs>